I am Anil Kumar. I have a lot of requests on this topic, quartiles. I have taken up three good examples which covers the variety you need to understand. So we will have three examples. This is involving a lot of calculations. You can pause the video, copy the question. We will come to this at the end. And uh, before that, we will take two simple questions. So let's get warmed up. So we'll have one question which is kind of like this, where the question is, for a recent standardized test, the median was 88, Q1 was 67, and Q3 was 105. Describe the following scores in terms of quartiles. The scores are 850, 90, and 115. You can pause this question, answer. However, we are going to begin from the third example which says that we need to determine quartiles and interquartile ranges uh, for the given data. Prepare a suitable box plot of the data. So I've taken very simple data here. The numbers are 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10, 12, and 30. Now, from here, we'll actually understand the concept about quartiles. So first thing which you need to know is when we talk about quartiles, remember quartiles divide data into four equal parts. That is basic, right? So, so we are going to start from here. Now, how many elements do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 1, 16, right? So if I divide 16 into four equal groups, how many do I get in each? Easy to see, four in each, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then there's four. Do you see that? So you have to divide the complete data into four equal groups. Once you do that, then you can say that this is this interval is first quartile. This is second, third, and fourth. So this interval is called first quartile. This one, second. third and fourth well some of you might get confused at this stage since you're always looking at q1 q2 q3 and q4 right so so you don't look into the intervals right but basically we are always looking at these numbers q1 right q2 and Q3, correct? So we don't even talk about Q4. Now that's the problem. And that makes things very difficult. And that is why I took this as my first example. So let us first understand quartiles come from the word quarter, right? So four equal parts, that's it. When we do percentile, we'll divide into 100 equal parts. Quarter, quartiles, perfect. Now the terms which we are using are Q1, Q2 and Q3. These are the boundaries. Remember this. So what are these? Q1, Q2 and Q3 are boundaries. Right? The interval is from lowest to Q1. Those are the intervals. Do you understand? I'll make it further clear once I make a box and whisker diagram for the same, right? <clears throat> okay, so let's get back to the question. We need to determine the quartiles and interquartile range. So we need to find Q1, Q2, and Q3, right? Now let us see how to find Q1, Q2, and Q3. Total number of elements or datum which we have here is 16, right? So N is 16 for us. Q1 is basically a position which we are looking for which is 
one quarter away. So quarter of this, which is the formula will be, we do n plus 1 divided by 4. Now n is 16 for us, right? So we do 16 plus 1, which is 17 divided by 4. And when you do that, what do you get? 17 divided by 4 is, in decimals, 4.25, correct? 4.25. That means it is between 4th and 5th element. That means between 4th and 5th position, you can say, right? Correct? So if you count 1, 2, 3, 4, and this is the 5th, so it is somewhere in between this, that position is Q1. Now to find this, what do you do? Like you do median, add them, divide by 2, right? So we'll add them, which is 3 plus 4 divided by 2, and that is 3.5. So Q1 is 3.5. So we say Q1 equals to 3.5. Does it make sense to you? Okay. Now what is Q2 equals to? So let's find what is Q2 equals to. Now Q2 will apply the same formula, right? And find the position. So position will be 17 divided by 4, right? So if I do 17 divided by, sorry, Q2 is 17 divided by 2, okay? 17 divided by 2 will give me what? Half of 17, right? So 8.5, correct? So... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and that is 9. So that is in between 8 and 9, right? So that is the position Q2, as I marked earlier. It is between 6 and 7. So between 6 and 7, we'll take the average value, add them, divide by 2. So what do you get? 6.5. Do you see that? 6.5. So for Q3, We'll do 17 over, now this is 3 fourth, Q3 is 3 fourth, 3 over 4, correct? So that should be 17 times 3 equals to divide by, I mean, divide by 4. And that gives you in decimals 12.75. So in a way, between 12th and 13th, correct? So 12th and 13th position is right there. Correct? So this is 12th, that is 13th in between. That means in between 9 and 10. So what is that value? So Q3 is equals to 9 plus 10 divided by 2, which is 9.5. So that is how you get all your values. Q1, Q2, Q3. These are your boundary values. I hope this concept is clear to you. These are your boundary values. Correct? Now, once we have found the value for Q1, Q2, Q3, which divide all the elements in the data into four equal parts, we can now make a box, which will represent this in a graphical form, right? So we call this as a, as a box with whiskers, right? Box and whisker plot. So let's make box and whisker plot for now. So what we have here is, let me first make a box here. Okay, I'm not making a scale. Uh, you should actually make it on a scale. Okay. Now what we have here is, in the box, we represent this as our Q1. Q3 is the other end. And in between, 6.5 in this case, uh, this is 3 here, 3 here, almost at the center. Okay. So in between, we have Q2. Right, And then with the boss, these are the whiskers, which will represent the other ends. Let me give them their respective names. These are called highest and lowest datum values. So this at the higher end is called the highest datum. And on this, it is called the lowest datum. perfect. In our case, value of Q1 is 3.5. Let me write 3.5 here. Q2 
q2 is 6.5 and q3 is 9.5 the highest data is 30 for the time being i'll keep it separate i'll tell you later why i wrote 30 here uh, but we'll keep 12 here we'll put 12 here and then the lowest is 1 so i'll put lowest data value is 1 perfect so I'm putting it there so that becomes the box and whisker and a line here determines the position for Q2 now a few more terms we'll talk about interquartile range now interquartile range which I'll write as IQR I'll rep IQR interquartile range is basically difference in the value of Q3 and q1 so in our case interquartile range will be 9.5 minus 3.5 which is 6 so this this distance here is 6 which is called iqr interquartile range we also have a term semi-quartile range let me write that here uh, semi-quartile range which will be 6 divided by 2 which is half of interquartile so it's just 3 okay so it is not between these two or those two it's just half of that semi-quartile range right so this range gives you the idea of, of measure of spread perfect around the median around the median not mean around the median the idea here is this is very accurate especially if you have some outliers some values which are fairly large, much larger than represented by the data. That's what outliers are. Now, how do you find outliers? Method here is that you add and subtract 1.5 times interquartile range to get to the outliers. So in our case, interquartile range is 6. So we'll multiply 1.5 by 6 and that gives us, let's do it, which is 9. So half of 6 is 3, so which is 9. So the range which we get is kind of like this. The upper limit is Q3 plus 6, in our case, which is 9.5 plus 6, which is 15.5, right? So, so somewhere here let's say 15.5 clearly 30 is much much higher so it is called an outlier for the given data so this is outlier the lower limit is lower limit will be uh, q1 minus 6 iqr let me write this time which is 6 so that is let me write down 3 point i mean uh, 3.5 minus 6 which is minus 2.5 so negative number so one is within the limit perfect but in the given data one is the lowest datum 30 will be highest datum if we are not looking into modified version perfect but in the modified we'll call 30 as an outlier and 12 as the highest datum you get the idea so this one whatever we have drawn here is a modified box and whisk so i hope with this the concept is clear about the quartiles correct so that is what quartiles are they divide the whole data into four equal parts so this is called the first quartile range so these three i mean four will come in first quartile range in second quartile will be these elements third these and these are upper or fourth quartile okay so based on this we have the next question correct so now let's look into our question number two now let us try to understand uh, quartiles especially in terms of its range with this example the question here is for a recent standardized test the median was 88 
Q1 was 67 and Q3 was 105. Describe the following scores in terms of quartiles, right? Now, as we learn, quartiles divide the data into four equal parts. We also learned about box and whisker. So what I'll do here is kind of create my box and whisker and place Q1, Q2, Q3 there. When we say median is 88, let me write 88 here, somewhere in the middle. Q1 is 67, so that is the beginning. And Q3 is 105, the end of this box, right? So these three positions are defined by Q1, Q2, and Q3, correct? Now, we could have different data elements in this. Now, when we say 8, then 8 is definitely a number which is on the left side of 67. So, let me write 8 here. 50 is a number which is within this box, I mean, closer to 67. So, I'm writing uh, 50 here, okay. Then we have a number 90 which will go here and 115 which can be placed outside the box on the right side. Correct? Now, when we say describe the following scores in terms of quartiles, then looking at this data, we could say that 8 and 50 are in first quartile. This is Q1, right? So, these are the boundaries of your quartiles. Do you understand? These are the boundaries for quartiles. So, so, so we could say that 8 and 50 are in first quartile. And then we'll say 90 is in. So, this is the boundary, right? So, e all the elements are equally divided into four groups. First, second, third, and fourth. So this is in third quartile range, I can say. Do you understand? Within that interval, and 115 is in upper, or we use the term fourth quartile. Is it okay? So these are the technical terms, and that is how they should be used. Now I'll also talk about outliers. Right now, let's calculate interquartile range, which is Q3 minus Q1. In our case, 105 minus 67. Correct? So, let's figure this out. So, we have 105 minus 67 equals to 38. Now, this number 8 seems to be much lower, right? So, we'll find the lowers or lower limit. Lower limit will be Q1 minus 1.5 times interquartile range. So, which will be for us 67 minus 1.5 times 38. And that is how much? Let's calculate. 67 minus 1.5 times 38 is equal to 10. So, so strictly speaking, this data, if we are talking about modified box, if we are talking about modified box and whisker plot, in that case, you know, that limit can be up to 10. So, 8 becomes an outlier. So, in that case, 8 is an outlier. Now, since it has not been specified, right, that's modified on or general, so we'll treat it as general, and so we'll stick with our answer of 8 and 50 are in first quartile. Do you see that? Now, can you name an element or a score which could be in second quartile? Any number between 67 and 88, perfect, will come here, okay? That is how it can be treated. So I hope this concept is clear. Now let's move on to a major question which requires 
lot of calculations, correct? So now let's look into this particular question. You can always pause the video, copy, solve it, and then look into my suggestions. The question here is, a mass of 2 kg box of chocolates was checked by finding masses of 180 boxes. The results are shown in the table. Calculate the median and interquartile range. Draw a modified box and whisker graph. Correct? So, uh, we need to calculate interquartile range. As you know, interquartile range is equal to Q3 minus Q1. So, we have to calculate all the quartiles. Perfect. Since we know that we are checking 180 boxes, if you total this up, you should get 180. Right? So, what we will do as first step is add up uh, the frequencies and rather make a, a column for cumulative frequency. So what I'll do here is make a column for cumulative frequency. So let's add one by one the values. So we'll begin with 8. Now 8 plus 15 is equal to 23. Then we'll add 22. So we get 45. Add 45, we get 90. So add 90 and 48 so we get 100 and so it is 8 and 8 for 13 138 and then 22 so 2 6 160 and then we get 172 adding 6 gives us 178 and adding 2 as expected 180 right so we indeed have 180 boxes so that gives you the uh, cumulative frequency now total number is 180 so these are how the calculations should be done n is 180 to find q1 we have to do n plus 1 divided by 4 right so first four fractions for four equal parts so it is 181 over 4 so that gives us so we'll do 181 divided by 4 equals to, in decimal numbers, 45.25. Now whatever you get actually is not the answer, but it's a position, right? Basically you get position. So we are looking for the element or the data element at 45.25. So 45 is here. So it is more than this, right? So it is more than this. So somewhere in between. So somewhere in between, we get Q1. So that means average of these two values. So Q1 is indeed equal to, we'll add 1.99 to 2.00 divided by 2. Perfect. And that indeed will be 1.995. So we get 1.995. So that becomes Q1. Now to find Q2, so what is Q2? Uh, well, let's do it here. Q2 will be 181, n plus 1, divided by 2, half of this, correct? So half of this will be 90.5, right? Twice this. So 90.5 again for us will be, uh, will be in between this. This is 90, so it is here, correct? So Q2 will be in between these two, that means average of these two values. So it is 2.00 plus 2.01 divided by 2, or it is 2.005, correct? So 2.005 becomes the value for Q2. Right. Now let's find Q3. So to find Q3, let's use a different thing. We'll do the calculation again. Q3 will be 181 times 3 over 4, correct? Third quarter, third quarter. So 181 times 3 divided by 4 in decimals gives us 135.75. Now 135.75 will be in this group, correct? So that is fine. So that is Q3. So for Q3, let me rewrite this value, will be 
perfect. So that becomes Q3 for us. Now, interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1, which is 2.01 take away 1.995. So 2.01 take away 1.995 gives you in decimals 0.015, correct? So IQR interquartile range is 0.015, okay? So that becomes IQR. So you could always create this box and whisker, but let's, because we are looking for modified, we should check for outliers also, right? So outliers on the maximum side, so let's say the maximum side will be Q3 2.01 plus 1.5 times the IQR, which is 0.015. Let's calculate this value. So which is 2.01 plus 1.5 times 0.015, that gives you in decimal a value which is 2.0325. Is it okay? So, so that is the highest value. That means these two are outliers. Perfect. Uh, that is on the maximum side. So the minimum side will be Q1, which is 1.995, take away 1.5 times 0.015. So let's calculate this also. We have 1.995, take away 1.5 times 0 0.015. In decimals, it is 1.9725. Okay, 1.9725 is least you could go. So that means uh, less than 1.9725 is not there. So, so that's the end of it, right? So that becomes an outlier. Okay, now with all this, now uh, let us sketch it. So I'm not sketching, uh, sketching it to the scale. I'm just making it clear for you. So we have this where Q1 is this n which is 1.995 q2 is somewhere in between which is 2.005 so 2.005 q3 is 2.01 and on this side you could go a maximum of 2.03 so i'm just writing 2.03 here 2.03 and on the lowest datum side we can go to 1.98 1.98 we do have two outliers here I mean on both the sides we have outliers so we have 1.97 and on this side we have 6 and 2 of 2.97 zero four and two point zero five you get an idea right mm -hmm. so so those are the outliers for us and let me say that this is your q2 but when you sketch it what you should do is kind of like this you draw a line here perfect and let's say let's say this is two right this is two then you say two point zero one zero two so, you know you have to go to a scale I kind of stretched it a bit so that I could include these numbers very clearly. You see that? So make a number line here kind of thing and then place the data as shown here perfectly. That's my advice to you for full marks. But this is an approximate diagram. Perfect. So what you learned here is that you could find outliers. I, I used the formula but I didn't really write it. So the outlier formula is kind of like this. Let me put it in a box here. I hope rest of the calculations are clear for you, right? So, so the outliers were calculated the kind of uh, Q1 minus 1.5 times 
interquartile range that gives you the lower value and q3 plus 1.5 times interquartile range gives you the upper limit right so anything in between will come in the modified box so this is the the modified box which we have since we are specifying the outliers perfect so what you see here is that these quarters actually divide the data elements into four equal number of elements in each group okay so we'll have 45 in each group do you see that almost correct so 45 90 and then 90 is 180 so that makes sense to you so 45 in each group okay now since there is higher concentration here so we get them squeezed up perfect and they are lesser here so that's the kind of data which we have so i hope this concept is clear quartiles once again divide the whole data into four equal equal groups in this example every quartile range has 45 elements right and interquartile range is difference between q3 and q1 from lowest datum to q1 is first quartile this is second quartile third quartile and fourth or upper quartile and these are called the outliers so with that we'll conclude this particular video i hope with these three examples you have fairly good idea and you should be in a position to score good marks in your test feel free to make suggestions and if you like and subscribe that'll be great thanks and all the best